So I was on my way back to Microtech to begin prepping for living aboard in the ship within the game. And on the way to the spaceport, Christoph would join me in voice to mull over some of the finer details. I just realised we need a new name for the Karak as well. It's very easy, the penguin one. Or the, un the undestructible penguin too. <laughs> We've had the rabbit raccoon and the reunion rail. Two names that will both start with like R and R. <laughs> Doesn't have to follow that trend, it's just an observation. And I throw a name out there just to see how it felt. Polar Penguin. Polar <laughs> Penguin. It's not that bad. It's not actually, no. I don't hate it, you know? <laughs> I think a lot of people are, are identifying the character as a penguin, so it's good. So the polar penguin it was to be, and it was stored here at New Babbage Spaceport, along with components from the Reunion Rail that had been returned here following the most recent patch to the game. This would greatly speed up outfitting the ship, and after returning to our regular life aboard crew uniforms, I'd be heading to the hangar to lay eyes on the ship that we were to crew. Now, the Karak is potentially a much more crew intensive ship than the Reclaimer, given the number of turrets plus the ability to carry shuttles and snubs. So, unlike our previous Life Aboard series, we decided to run this one entirely on the channel's Discord server, where folks could join the crew ad hoc as they saw fit, and immediately I'd have Sharpest Katana, Stormguard, and Altair making the journey to Microtech to join the crew. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the ship to outside the commons. Just put it on the ground outside the commons. I'd have some time before anyone actually made it here, so loading up on supplies and vehicles seemed like a good use of the time, and it was nice to get the ship out for a quick first flight anyway. Wait, it's, there's someone flying next to me, there's a, an Avenger. There's quite a lot of ships parked outside the commons. Landing outside the commons, I'd get to work moving things from the local inventory onto the ship, starting with the most important item of course, Picos. All must hail our lord and saviour Pico. The church of Pico. I mean it does it does really make sense that, that we have a lot of Picos on the on the penguin. The ship is a tribute to Pico. I'm definitely gonna need somebody to buy more ammo. So oh, just checking, can you hear me? Uh, yes. We love the little noises that Picos make. With a sufficient amount of luck bestowed upon the ship now, it was time to pick up a ground vehicle. I suppose while I'm waiting here, I should probably bring some vehicles on board. I'd mentioned to the crew that I'd like the rescue places on board to have a suitable paint scheme, and so discussions began among those on their way here over which of the paints that I should get. But I think it matches. White red is good. I would go for that one. Okay, cool, cool. But yeah. but the blue white is also very nice. Uh, the blue white, I think it matches, and the blue red and the right. I think the white red, both are nice. I think blue blue and white would fit the penguin theme more. The blue white has a, a white cross on it as well, so. For our ground vehicle, I chose the Ursa Rover, and I'd share some insights on how I usually choose my paints. If I can get a white paint for it, I get a white paint. And it all started with the um, the Best in Show Valkyrie, because that's white and it looks incredible. If I park over to the side, and we, if we wanted to bring like a grav level on board or something, we could do that. Probably block that door off, yeah. No, it's still space, okay. The time had come to make a decision on the Pisces paint. Okay, right. Having seen the two, I'm going against the grain, I would admit. 
I'm going with the red and white because I just feel like it'll fit better, just a little bit better. And I know it's it's gonna be a controversial decision. <laughs> I mean, it's your it's your ship. It's your okay. Exactly. I also I also think that the red one is fitting very nicely. In order to load the Pisces on board, though, I need to travel back to the spaceport. Okay, I'm coming in for a landing next to the Carex. And just after our first crew member, Sharpest Katana, arrived, we got underway. Two, two, two Uh, I always forget how big the carrot is. Our Pisces has uh, an appropriate colour on it now. Can't pull it just yet, but it's ready. Stormguard had by now also made it on board, and he and Katana were figuring out where to leave their things. We'll go to habitation because you can put your box somewhere. Like near a corner of the, ha of the habs. <laughs> Do we have assigned quarters yet? Well, you two, uh, you're first on board, so you get first pick of the beds uh, in there. I forget where the beds are, so we might not get first pick. Opposite the galley, you'll see like a room with like a billiards table. It's just past that room. I'll show you now. Oh. I'm coming up now, I'll show you. The Carrick does not have individual berths for the crew, but the crew quarters has five bunks. So hidden, uh. Inside, Sharpest Katana was investigating the room and spotted something that would have made a really useful external storage space. Oh, they actually have small lockers. They're just not uh, inventories. Yeah, it'd be really good if they were. It's the same with the um, the Connie. It's got those like really narrow lockers, and it'd be really good if they were like uh, external storage. Yeah, I mean you could put a gun in, but it's like you know you're risking a few things. Because Hana had already placed a box to store crew uniforms, and I had some of my own to add to it. Oh, you've got loads in it. Well, yeah, it's good. Katana got himself adjusted to the uniform just in time to come and be the pilot for our Pisces, call sign Penguin Jr. Fine addition to the Polar Penguin. I mean, we have the Pisces today. And in keeping with the current limitations of the game, I would need to jump in the pilot seat and open the hangar doors before Katana could take the ship. Online. Ready to steal the, steal the Jr. Good, okay. <laughs> All ready to go. I'd be returning to the Polar Penguin where Altair had also now made it on board, and we'd be leaving the hangar so we could rendezvous with Katana outside. Ground. I'll come back and open the hangar now. And it was clear from his entry that Katana was eager to get back aboard the Polar Penguin. Alright, I'm in uniform. I do have some armor and a weapon in the ship inventory because it won't fit in my little tiny box, so. Okay. Sure, yeah. It's the room. Oh, oh. I landed a little stuff. bit too fast. I landed too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not realize how, how high I. <laughs> it's, it's only a little bit of a scratch on the right wing, it's fine. <laughs> but the second approach would be far smoother. I say I'm not the pilot of the Pisces. Just eager to get on board, that's all. And ideas to carry even more in the hangar. I'm just looking at this, how can we fit a Fury? You think we can fit a Fury as well? I don't... Maybe like if we like put the Pisces onto one side, we could fit the Fury tightly. Inspecting the space, I thought we could probably fit a Fury in here as well. Yeah, I, I didn't turn <laughs> the engines off. Let me turn off the engines. There we go. Yeah, Fury might be a tight squeeze in here, but who knows. With crew joining up and vehicles being loaded, there was an exciting atmosphere on board. We've got an Ursa on board, we've got a... Uh, the Pisces on board. 
We need to leave Armistice Zone to like put weapons in a weapon rack. Yeah, let me, let me start loading. Let me start loading like a bunch of my uh, stuff into the local inventory. The crew were pulling supplies on board, so it seemed like a good moment as any to go and relax for a moment in the captain's ready room. Uh, where should I put multi tools and stuff? Also in the armory? Okay. Weapons, armor, and like utility stuff down in the armory. Um, we could move things into inventory and onboard boxes, but to actually fill the weapon rack in the armory, we would need to leave the armistice zone. I'm gonna get us out of armistice so we can sort the weapon rack out. And stuff. With uh, if you put those pants on. Oh, okay. You need, that's why the pants are there. Leaving Wakutek, we wouldn't be travelling far initially, just out into dead space for the time being. Are we heading to Fressler now? No, I'm just gonna jump us into space. Just for a moment. This seemed as safe a spot as any to park up as we prepped. Look at you, Altair. I was heading for the armory located on the subdeck towards the aft of the ship and its two very large weapon racks. There is no accommodation for heavy weapons like railguns down here, so it would be boxes for them. But for normal guns, there is plenty of room. Okay, I got the, um, the big uniforms box kind of nicely tucked in the corner there. I have to, I have to try to holster the weapon in order to place it. Weird. Where do you want the uh, 55? Over here, this side. I'll put, I've put two FS9s and I'll, I'll put two Demicos if you put F55s as well. I have four of them. Okay, check them in, yeah. This is a cool snail when you get the you get the rack full. It looks great. Ooh, bigger box, I like it. Oh yeah, wow, ammo. Lots of ammo. The boxes would be shifted to the edge of the room as suit lockers are non-functional at this time. Let's try it against the suit lockers here, yeah, because like we don't need those right now. There is armor in there, but like there's only one leg armor right now. Altair had more to load, but it was over in Area 18. Well, we can go there if you want. And obviously, given my distinct lack of piloting skill, I would suggest that someone else fly the ship. We'll need a better pilot than me, though, eventually. And I know that there were some people who wanted to be a pilot. I mean, I pushed on the pilot in the reclaimer. Oh, if you want to fly, you are very welcome. So, with Altair at the helm, the Polar Penguin was about to head out on its first stretch of travel to Art Corp, and Katana would be joining me in the upper bridge. I'm going to take top turret. There was a time when we did um, crewing a reclaimer, not a reclaimer, a uh, Karak, and there is a commander station, right, but it doesn't really do anything right now, which um, makes it not quite as you like it'd be good if it did stuff because it's a great view from that spot most of those joining us were not familiar with the carrack and we'd be learning as we went where's the button uh it's kind of like next to the screen okay, see the, the power button jump one <laughs> as soon as I asked her help, she's like, oh, yeah, here <laughs> Yeah, I don't think this thing can actually do much, but, you know. No, no, sadly, uh, it, it is um, kind of useless at the moment. I think that'll probably be the engineer's seat or something when that's added. Maybe. Altair would immediately suggest that we fit a military drive instead of the Aerobos that was really optimised for the Reclaimer last time. Do they sell them in Area 18? Because if they do, we could buy one there. Pika was just staring at me as well. <laughs>
Storm Guard was staying aboard the ship, but Altair decided to join Katana and me on a trip into the city centre. Guys, I disconnected for being inactive for too long, but I'm coming back here. Uh, uh, hopefully it puts you on art card because that's right. In Kasaba, Cruise Lux is sold individually. Oh, you can buy them as soon as you need in the weapon Oh, oh can you? Okay, cool. Yep. Actually, I can drink one though because my food meter is quite low now. But in Kobe Blast, Cruise Lux can be bought in bulk, along with other supplies. Why this... some tiger claws as well? Uh, is there anything specifically like we need to go out of our way to go grab? Not really. I, I you know, I think we, if we've got cruise looks, like that basically covers food and drink. Um, we've got ammo on board. For component shopping, I figured I'd try my luck at Dumper's Depot. I didn't know what they stocked, but it was worth a shot. what components they sell here. We've got the ponce, which is the same as what the the caterpillar starts with. It's a military drive, but it's pretty fast. Do you think that would be a better choice than the Arabos that we've got fit? Yeah, he's far better. Got one of those. Almost twice at first. So with our shopping complete, it was time to return to the ship, and by this time we were being joined by even more crew, with Slushy and Zugbug travelling out to meet us. Sorry to interrupt, but who am I adding again? Just uh, Katana. Okay. So, we'll have a box in here in a minute, and I'll chuck a bunch of Cruise Lux in the box. boxes in the habitation so people can claim a box and put the personal stuff there. Nice. Oh hey, Zug looks here. Hey Zug. And of course we'd all be setting our regen point on board the ship in the med bay. They're decorating. Put some cookies in there. We'll put more in the storage in the room. Locker. Things were really coming together now, and the crew were making themselves way at home with storage boxes for all. Like, this is like skeleton crew size. There was just one more thing we needed to bring aboard, and we would need to head for the genie point to make it happen. Open the hangar doors so that, like, whenever we decide to depart, they are open. Once again, Altair would be piloting the ship for the journey out of atmosphere to the station. I'm just not getting a chance to look at this paint, and it is awesome. At the genie point, we were to repair the Pisces and hopefully bring a Fury on board as well. We'd be landing on a pad, so I would need a spacesuit to enter the station. Okay. Ice Ease is going up, I'm gonna land it so I can repair it and also uh, The footprint of this thing is not huge, so we might be able to get it in. We might possibly be able to squeeze it in. Okay, we'll try to land try to give you as much room landing while also allowing the door to be But approaching the ship, I would encounter one final speed bump. Hopefully, this is basic. Alright. 
Oh, I see what you've done. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and you have a lot of room. Attention. Oh, I'm being scanned. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, the Fury can be, have so many drugs on Varda. We gotta make sure. All of them can be fit now. Katana had made space, and it actually made the Fury a comfortable fit. Oh, yeah, that looks. Nice. Yeah, look at so that. It was made for that. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! Okay, yeah, a lot more room, lot more room than I had to deal with. We even mused about ways to maybe fit two Furies in here. Back this one up and you could have one like pointing that way, you know, like here, maybe. Yeah. Now the question is, what's the Furies name? <laughs> Finally, we were setting out in earnest, and as some of our crew weren't familiar with the ship, I'd run over a few last minute things. Does everyone know where the turrets are on the ship? Yes, right, two on the wings, one on the roof, and aft, and one on the bridge. Okay, good, good. It's very important that when we, if we go into a hangar, you need to get out of the turrets. Um, because they get, they, they extend outward and make it too wide. Mm. There aren't any, like, Merc missions here at the moment. I've got a, I've got a service beacon, it's a low threat. Certs when it comes to bounties. Back to the... okay. Sharing them. The first job was nothing too strenuous, recovering stolen packages and returning them to their rightful owners. All the turrets manned. Uh, Our destination was the Moon Waller. We might see the um, reinforcement cutlass, but we shouldn't really encounter any um, ships to worry about uh, on one of these missions. There's a, a box in the galley with like a hundred cruise decks in it. Um, the kind of convenient thing about doing like a life aboard thing is that like when you've got all the supplies on the ship, it means yeah. that people can just grab them as they need them. And on the way down to the derelict outpost ahead, Ryu, Roham and Vlaz would also jump in, ready to join us. Hey, it's Ryushi. Ryu, from before. I remember you. Yeah. Uh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and welcome, Rojam. It's good to see you. Hi! Thanks, uh... Thank you, it's good to be here. <laughs> Saw you guys online, thought I'd check it out. See what's up. We're on the maiden voyage of the Polar Penguin. It's our life aboard Karak. Polar Penguin. <laughs> I mean, if someone wants to get into the... into the Fury, I provide air support. That's actually a really funny, like fun idea. Business. So, following through on Katana's suggestion, rather than jumping out on foot, I'd be climbing aboard the Fury to help with the air support. But as we all know, I am not a good pilot. Well, who else is okay, going to be on, with, with on the ground? Oh, yeah, Are you still in the pilot seat? Can you hit open? Leaving the hangar, no hostiles had been spotted yet, but I would set the ship to combat mode, ready to go. Cool. So there's no hostiles, it looks like. No. No one opposing me grabbing this box. The packages were recovered quickly, and I was returning to the Karag. The Fury loses combat ability when the landing gear is down, and this was something that I was not fully aware of at this time. Contact, are you on the right side? Uh, behind? No. Behind the Karag. See it? Uh, I was moving in to intercept. Oh, it's coming in fast, it's a cutlass coming in fast. Cutlass. Stop the my gun's not firing yet. Now, I was trying to return to combat mode here, but I couldn't seem to get a response from the landing gear when trying to stow them. Uh, it's, it might be landing on top of the Karak. Because the icon on the top left doesn't look like it. I can move the Karak if oh, you need me to. I... And in the darkness, I was about to trip up in a big way. Oh, that does no, not Fury look good. Fury might be down. Fury might be down. Oh, Cutlass is down. 
and he might be going down. There is some spinning <laughs> going on. Eventually, I was able to stop the spin, but I had lost an engine in the crash. You don't have a spacesuit, uh. I had no suit to leave the ship, and in this state, it was extremely hard to maneuver. Okay, this the Fury is no longer flight capable. <laughs> Try to pretend that thing's unflyable when you get there. You just spun all the way out of Right click my name crazy. and just try to go into it. <laughs> it was not graceful, let's put it that way. <laughs> I mean, I disagree. You survived oh, yeah. and spun out of the atmosphere. That's. There was still the possibility that the Carrick could rescue me, though, when they left the ground. If the carrot gets up here, they can just track me on board. I'm pretty sure. But you might be able to do. If the hangar is closed, you might be able to just like get me it's to land on top of it. Yeah. That's my intention. I think you're either on top or inside. If you just thrust upward uh, now, you might be able to just get me to just sit on top of it. It seemed like there was no longer a physics grid here atop the hangar that had allowed us to land here in the past. Wait, did they give it to the physics grid here? Because that doesn't feel like it's attaching. I mean, you're in combat mode or are you dead? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I've got landing gear down. So I need to descend into the hangar itself. Uh, the elevator is slightly moving to the left. I'm trapped in an elevator? Rip. Let's jump out of the ship just so I can go up to the top hangar. So don't leave until I get back. Got it. <laughs> nice, you got it. Okay, Yay. I'd made it back in after a lot of wiggling around and attempts to correct the orientation, and Stormguard would confirm my tractor beam theory. <laughs> oh no, that thing's moved. <laughs> I'm I'm I was tractoring it. You can tractor it, so you can, yeah, you can use the little tractor beams to tractor it, yeah. But it doesn't want to rotate. Yeah. Here's what I'm wondering, that new salvage gun thing. Can you use that to repair thrusters? So you can repair uh, components so for that. problem. Okay, is I've got, I've got it on my So with everything back aboard, we could set off to the drop point for the first package. A mining outpost that was also here on Walla, and an opportunity to repair the Fury after all. Yeah, we're, we're going to Walla. One of the drop uh, points is here. No, okay, cool, cool. cool. But who are you? Sorry. With Christoph returning, I'd fill him in on what we were doing right now. At the moment we're doing a delivery mission, but you know, it's it's gonna vary. We got all of these supplies and stuff on the ship. We've got a working Pisces and a not so working Fury on board. I just see that you're 18 kilometers away, so. Yeah, I see you. Okay, I'm gonna try and repair the Fury, so don't, don't land on the pad. Yeah. Is everybody gonna bring their, uh, their tanker? Um, I'm not a fancy boy. I'm gonna drink I, I, out of my broke-ass cruise. Stealing, stealing mugs with the oh, okay, here goes. Following Ryu's advice, strafing was much more stable than flying forward with this damage. That's a standard bug of that Carrick. Okay. I might clip the, the elevator itself. Oh, I think so. Good. Okay, we're repaired. The working fury again. Oh, yeah. I arrived back just in time to see some very strange behavior from the elevators. Now we just need working elevators inside this game. <laughs> yeah, so I want to try to repair it and see if some of the damage is causing this. No, that's just a, a feature of the Carrick, brother. Uh, I'd seen the front elevator break a few times on the Carrick, but nothing like what I was about to see. You say that that's that one, one. That's, the, that's the one we are struggling with right now. Not it the small one that's up near the... Oh, uh, normally it's the small one that breaks, yeah. Right now. It's rough. Yeah, that's rough. Oh, that's oh my god! I, <laughs> <laughs> that elevator is... <laughs> Katie, hop on it and just press a button and see what happens. The last okay, time I did okay, that, yeah. it just spun in a circle. I'll let you out if it's... Here goes. Let's see where I end up, if anywhere. Oh my goodness. Oh, just yeah, what was funny that I just pulled it. Uh, uh, I've never seen the back one the break. That's crazy. Hey, uh, so how do we get down? There is a ladder. Yeah, you you can use a ladder to get down. Oh, that's um, right. Oh, right. <laughs> oh. It's hilarious. Okay, yeah, there's a ladder by here. Yeah. 
just I didn't think about it. I, I just looked at it and I didn't think about it. We attributed the elevator problems to the server that we were on, as the crew were also having some difficulties with delivering the package to the outpost. Still, before logging to a new server, we figured we'd give one more mission a go and see if things leveled out. Okay, I'm sharing a mission now. Everyone get ready to accept it. I'm sharing it now. It's a, it's a entrenched bounty. It's on a wallow as well, so it's nearby. So the wanted for our corp does this from off trial, that's the one we're on right that's now? That's the one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. But just as another odd complication, one of our crew could no longer physically collide with the ship's entry ramp, and so had to be picked up and brought aboard by the Penguin Junior. Yeah. The next mission was a bounty target we believe would be on foot, but could very well have air support with them. Seven kilometers up, there's something. Bottoms up. Can be the balcony. White ship. Yeah, it's not, it's not hostile yet. We got three. Yep. We'd seen something like this recently, so this was not a guarantee that they were hostile ships. I would guess they're probably NPC bounty hunters, so they're probably not okay to shoot. There was a strange little family of ships gathering above this caterpillar wreck and looking to redeem myself, I decided I'd again hop in the fury to cover from the air. I'm also clear. Looks like the target might be inside part of the rack. On my initial sweep, I didn't spot any bad guys out in the open, but after circling around a little, I thought I might be able to get shots into the caterpillar rack to hit the target that we were after. There's a nomad here as well. Oh, I got him. I got him. Oh, someone got him. Maybe it might have been Zerg. I don't see any other NPCs around, like there's no, it doesn't look like this. But that notion was about to be proved very clearly wrong. But this NPC is just behind us. Oh, yep, no, I see him. <laughs> they are shooting at me. I can't sit down. <laughs> An enemy cutlass was on approach. Black coming in. Hostile. Oh yeah, he's yeah, red. This one, okay. I'm running to the turret on the car. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fly a lot more carefully this time. Oh, I see he's moving in. It's pretty messed up. It's pretty messed up. Pisces is moving into land back on the Karak. Uh, can someone open the door on the. Uh, yep, fire coming I'm running back there now. With no more enemy to kill, it was time to return to the Karak. Tinker door open. Okay, did I leave you enough space? It was clear though that this server was not in the best of conditions, and so we made plans to return to Bajini Point to swap servers. And then we see so we, we can't really do it. Yeah, I think all these NPCs are going through right now. They're struggling. Yeah, it's weird. I've never seen like the ships, the Connie and the Nomads. It's weird to see those here. With no working elevators though, we'd be using the ladder to reach the subject. Blast, can you 
uh, tractor my body out of there or something? Just for <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bulkhead and now I'm stuck. <laughs> So we'd safely made it back to the station on day one, but this was not the end of our adventures and on the new server we'd be treated to some of the best mission instances that I've seen in a while. How did we get on aboard the Polar Penguin? Well join us next time to find out. In celebration of Stella Fortuna, CIG have kindly sent us a Star Citizen game package complete with LTI Miss Grazer and the Fortuna Green paint scheme to give away to one lucky viewer. For your chance to win just leave a like and a comment on this video and we will pick a winner in the coming days. Good luck everyone and a huge thank you to CIG for sending these cool prizes our way. As always I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. And in this video I would especially like to thank David Dell and Johan63 who both recently became supporters of the channel. Thank you both for choosing to support, that is a huge help and I really appreciate it. We'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.